hey viewers welcome back to this channel hope you are doing extremely well so today we are going to discuss interesting concept of the java actually it is not of the java it is used in almost all the programming language whether it is c c plus plus python or golang javascript it is used in all the pro all the programming languages okay so today we are going to understand the concept of loop okay so before moving on to the concept if you guys are new to our youtube channel then don't forget to subscribe so let's try to understand so what if i will say or i will request you to print hello world 10 times on the screen what you will do you will write system dot out print talent 10 times and you will get the output okay but what if i will say that i will perform your 10 time 10 lines of code into two lines by using the loop what i will do i will write some code like this so 10 i plus plus and within this curly braces i will like system dot out dot print print ln and i will get hello world and let's try to run it we get hello world 10 times okay so you might be thinking that what i have written here okay this is nothing but the loops so what are loops loops are nothing but that statement which helps to execute a particular lines of statement multiple times unless and until some condition get violated or some condition get achieved that means like uh, what i said right now is that loops is some statement so it can be anything like uh, so before moving further let me tell you the different types of loop in java so actually there are two different types of loop which are mostly used in java that is the for loop and the while loop now for both of these we will at first try to understand that how they work what are the different part of it what is the syntax of using this loop and what are the flow chart of this loop okay so the first one is that there are two types of loop okay and as i explained earlier that what is the looping statement so it is a statement okay so when we write something here it will become a statement so looping is a statement which have some other statement so each loop have some uh, have some space of associated with it that will uh, be that will come under this curly braces so uh, what i was saying each st uh, looping is nothing but some statements which will execute some statement so when we write something within this curly braces uh, some statements within this curly braces like i will write here statement one or statement two statement two similarly i will write like here statement three okay so the looping was nothing looping is a statement which will help to execute other statement multiple times unless and until some condition get violated or unless and until some condition get achieved okay so means it will work uh, finite times until some condition get achieved okay so as you are you can see in the definition of the loop we are saying that some condition get achieved or some condition get violated so to make the condition to make to uh, just to achieve that condition we need to start from somewhere and we need to uh, move with some speed and we have some destination point okay so obviously here there are both of these three things uh, for each loop if there's maybe a there will be a starting point there will be a f uh, ending point and there will be a, a speed of the iteration of the loop okay so what i was saying let me erase it at first just because at first we are going to discuss the for loop why we are why we are going to discuss for loop just because it is the frequently used loop most frequently used loop and it is the most liked used uh, liked loop of the student just because here both of the three statement come under a single line okay so what i was saying let's try to understand it one by one so here assume i have written some statement one some statement two this is nothing but my for loop here i will write something here i have the statement three statement three and the statement four so now we are going to understand two concepts one by one that is the flow chart of the for loop and that what are the three different parts of the for loop so the first part as the each journey has is the initial part means the starting point similarly the for loop has some starting point so that we called is the initialization part named it as initialization part okay 
similarly each journey has some the final point or the destination point similarly we call it as an a conditional part just because we stop our for loop iteration the moment we achieved some condition or the moment we violate some condition okay now for each journey there have to be a uh, each journey have some speed like uh, uh like how fast will move similarly the for loop have the updation part or the uh, incrementation part that what will the speed of the for loop iteration okay so i hope you get it that for loop have three parts initialization condition and updation so what we are going to do within these three let's try to understand it initialization part as the name suggests that here we initialize something so uh, we can initialize anything whether we initialize the variables we initialize something okay to start our loop okay so let i write here i equals to zero now there is a condition right till now uh, till when i need to iterate or till when i want to uh, make my loop to work so i am writing like i is less than 10 okay now the updation part okay the updation part is just the speed of the looping that right? how fast i want to iterate i am writing is i plus equals to 2 okay means i want the speed of twice okay so at the first part so what will the flow chart let's try to understand the flow chart okay at first we will discuss the flow chart of this for loop and then we discuss the flow chart of the whole program in which the for loop is used so at first the initialization part takes place that means whenever the for loop arises or the looping statement arises the first thing is the initialization so at first i get initialized with zero and then after the initialization means uh, the condition take place so it moves like this let me take in yellow color it moves like this the condition take place it checks whether zero is less than 10 or not so here it comes to note that yes zero is less than 10 so it moves to the statement part it executes the statement three i assume that here i have printed my name okay or i have system.r.printl and hello world so it printed line okay after statement checking it moves to the updation part it update its step okay so it, uh, uh, here we are updating the i plus 2 so now the value of i become 2 after updation it again moves to the condition now it will not move to the initialization part means initialization is only uh, iterated or is only executed once throughout the life cycle of the loop looping statement okay uh, just because if we initialize each variable again and again in each iteration then we will never reach to the conditional part or we will never reach to our final destination okay so after updation we reach to the conditional part that is i is less than 10 it will check whether our condition is violated or not here it check whether 2 is less than 10 or not yeah 2 is less than 10 it will again okay let me change the color so now in the second iteration it will again move execute the statement 3 it will again reach to the updation part it will update 2 plus 2 it is now my value of i become 4 okay again it will from the updation part it reaches to the condition part it will check the condition whether the 4 is less than 10 or not here it will come to know that yeah 4 is less than 10 so it will again move to the statement 3 uh, it prints system.r.println and hello world after statement 3 it reaches to the updation part it again updates the updates the value of i from 4 to the 6 and still it is uh, and it is keep on keep going on okay uh till when it will uh, do all these things it will do all these things till uh, my value of i is less than 10 value of i is less than 10 as soon as my value of i become 10 it will come out of the loop just because it is not allowed to execute the condition in which the value of i is equals to 10 okay so let's try to understand the flow chart of the sorry uh, the flow uh, flow chart of the whole program in which the loop is used okay so as we have discussed till now we have discussed only the for loop flow chart so what happened at when we uh, use and the loop when we use any loop within our program we know the compiler start execution of the program from the main function okay it keep on it start executing the main function at first and and one by one it keep on iterating throughout the whole program so at first the compiler execute the statement one then the statement two and the moment it comes to this loop it will keep on iterating this again and again unless the i i is less than 10 
okay means this statement 3 get executed four times at i equals to 0 at i equals to 2 at i equals to 4 at i equals to 6 and at i equals to 8 okay so this uh, this statement 3 get executed for five times okay for all of these statements now moving to it further so moving further when it uh, when the i become 10 it will not execute it it come out of this loop the statement and will execute the statement force okay so the looping statement work like this okay and the moment i will become less than 10 it will go it will go with the flow and execute all the other remaining statements okay let's try to code uh, on the compiler about the okay uh, about the for loop or the, uh, the code of the for loop okay for int i equals zero as less than 10 i plus plus let's see how the value of uh, how the value of i is getting incremented and for which case the uh, for loop will not execute okay print ln and here i am printing the value of i okay so let's try to run this code so here you can see the loop get executed for the value of 0 the value of 1 the value of 2 the value of okay i am executing i plus plus let me make it i plus equals to 2 okay so here you can see the loop get executed for 0 2 4 6 and 8 but it will not get executed for the 10 the moment when the i will value will become equals to the 10 it will come out of the loop okay so this was about the for loop let's try to understand the while loop the while loop work the same but as uh, in the for loop we do the initialization condition and the updation part in a single statement but in the while loop the loop execution is a little different actually the way of writing the code is okay is little different so let's me let me show you the syntax of the while loop so before the while loop we perform the initialization okay initialization we perform before the while loop within the while loop brackets we perform the condition part we check the condition within the while loop and within the space of the while loop we perform the incrementation part okay here you can see the syntax of the while loop is a little different from the for loop just because within the for loop the whole uh, the whole three things that is the initialization condition and the incrementation part get executed or get written into a single line but here initialization condition and incrementation we are written writing it in different places the initialization takes place before the while loop the conditional take place in the brackets of the while loop and the incrementation take place within the space of the while loop okay so let's try, try to code it uh, the one more thing about this is that the flow chart of the while loop is same as the for loop means the while loop get executed unless and until some condition get achieved or some condition get uh, violated okay let's try to code it and try to understand its syntax so i'm writing int i equals to zero this is nothing but the initialize initialization part okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh run a while loop while i is less than 10 this is the conditional part conditional part conditional part okay within this what i'm going to do is that at first i'm going to print the value of i and performing the incrementation part this is called the incrementation part okay let's try to run this so here you can see this loop also got executed for i equals to 0 2 4 6 and 8 but it will not get executed for i equals to 10 the moment uh, value of i reaches to 10 it get out of the loop okay so i hope you get the for loop and the while loop this is the looping statements of the java and these loops are not only used in java it is used in almost all the programming language the looping statements are important in programming just because it is used in almost all the concepts it is used in solving so many problems so i hope you get it so if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button subscribe our youtube channel and share it with your friends till then stay safe stay healthy